Okay, this is Steve. I'm going to show you a picture of the uh, caught my Salvador Dali vessel. It's an Owens 30 with this kind of hard top with this corrugated little plastic sort of kind of see-through, not very see-through. And then it's very much like a Chris Craft in style. It's a 30 foot length twin gas engines and uh, it's all painted in house paint and it's a really stout structure here if you can kind of see the beams and it's big huge beams that's a big I don't believe it's a hollow beam both of those are solid and it's milled four by fours and uh, that's where your engines are down here on the floor and then you've got the cabin there and the helm and it's open on either side this one on the port side and this one that we're looking at going right in through that's my shadow there you can see my shadow and a little uh, cool sort of uh, native American um, horse uh, that's a metal uh, uh, decal metal decal that's bolted to the side and then it has um, no, there's no windlass on it, but there's a port to the V-berth, which is roomy and has really nice hardwood and uh, both the middle four window for the main cabin and the middle four window for the pilot house are broken, need replacement. Notice the uh, lovely state of the wiper blades. And uh, there's a fair amount of growth. It's a wood hull, so it's not worth very much because it's a wood hull, but it's sound and it's old and it's kind of been cared for. It needs cleaning, needs painting, needs diving on or something. And then there's a whole bunch of room here on the main salon uh, roof, which is really stout and the inside is pretty cool. There's the horn going. I wanted you to see the sailing that goes on here pretty regularly. I'm going to come up on the top deck. It's probably stable enough or sturdy enough to support a hot tub up here or a putting green or it's I'm gonna say about 12 feet long by a good seven or eight feet wide and it's quite uh, stout it's it doesn't give away underfoot I'm about 165 170 and it, you can just walk around on it, it needs some rails and it needs some beach chairs uh, but it's uh, an awful lot of space both on the inside and above decks to do you could put a pilot house up here just with a remote electronic remote control to drive an outboard on it or re-control the two gas engines repower with diesel whatever you want uh, but it's blowing and there's kind of you can see the sun shining on the water and the, the what you're looking at across the water there's the committee boat yelling and screaming about okay here we go we're going for a race again uh, across the water you see Bainbridge. That's Bainbridge Island on the other side of the boats if you can see that. Let me zero in a little bit on one of the... Let's see if I can see what it is. It's a little bit difficult to see what vessels. There's a lot of different vessels. This is kind of a... It even looks like there's a trimaran. Uh, maybe a couple of trimarans racing. So it's sort of... Uh, there's handicaps and anybody can race and there's smaller boats, larger boats boats with different kinds of rigs. There's boats that are seen to be sailing out there without even their foresail. Uh, you'll see spinnakers come out if the point of sailing is appropriate and it's a right for a spinnaker a shoot, we call them a shoot. And there's, uh, well in this race I'm going to guess there's 20 to 30 vessels that are out here on a Monday evening after work. It's late enough, they come down and especially when it's blowing like this, that's the time you get the most people because they look at the weather patterns at work or on their smartphone. They look them up on the internet and go, we're going. We're go In fact, there's a chute straight out uh, coming downwind, running from north to south along the sound. And you can see there's some wind. You can see these vessels healing. That means when they're leaning over at 10, 20, even 30 degree uh, angle on the wind. And all of the people racing are on the windward side. That's the side that the wind is blowing into. Covering, it's called covering, where you're essentially movable ballast is what many of the people who are racing are. And they're also manning the running rigging, which are the lines that go through the blocks and putting up sails and running halyards, and manning the helm and, 
navigating and trying to figure out how to get ahead of the next guy. All that fun stuff you do when you're racing uh, sailboats like I've done for 45 years. Approximately 45 years of teaching sailing, building sailboats, rehabbing them, and racing all over the place. Uh, both monohulls and multi-hulls. Up to Olympic class tornadoes. I haven't really raced a lot of Olympic class monohulls, uh, but those are coming. And so are larger vessels that are fun to race offshore. Um, we'll be in a southeast area, southeast of Sork, soon enough in a Transpac. Uh, one of my next door neighbors is in a Transpac right now. I was kind of jealous. He took off for San Francisco and he's headed for Hawaii right now in a Transpac race. So that's what happens here at Shell Shoal Bay Marina in Ballard, Washington on a Monday afternoon in July, I think it's July 14th, uh, when the wind is up. <laughs>